Hello everyone, it's Joseph and Ray back again. Another episode of Ask EVGA. Uh, forget the number again. Uh, I think this one's 13. 13. Oh, it's an unlucky one. Yeah. Um, so uh, we got a lot of questions today, so yeah. we're just going to jump in real quick. Yep. Um, no time for small talk. Uh, so the first question is from Shinshar. I think that's how you say it. Pretty close. Uh, close enough. And he said, but what if you don't have double BIOS and you can't switch over to another BIOS? Okay, um, this question comes from the video that I did um, that showed you how to fix a corrupted motherboard BIOS. Um, somebody in the comments sounded off saying that, you know, this should be your EVGA only, but it's not because a lot of uh, motherboard manufacturers will have um, boards that have multiple BIOS with a physical switch. So that actually will work for any motherboard that has that. Um, but that is a prerequisite for that to work. Um, if your board does not have dual BIOS, if it's an EVGA board, it should at least have a replaceable BIOS chip which point we recommend that you reach out to our customer service um, because we can send you a chip that has the correct BIOS on it so that we can get your board back up and running. Um, supposing that you have a board that's got one BIOS, no switch, and that BIOS chip is not replaceable, um, frankly, it's not a very good motherboard at that point, but uh, realistically, uh, you'd need to reach out to the manufacturer and get it replaced because at that point, um, there's really nothing you can do. Uh, we intentionally make it so that it's hard to break firmware because if you actually genuinely do break firmware, it is an issue, and it's something that can't be fixed without sending it to the manufacturer, who then will have a way of flashing it um, internally. Uh, okay, let's move on to the next one here. Uh, this is from Bobby M. Uh, he asks, will EK water block fit this card? If so, is there a two-slot bracket that I can buy so that the card doesn't take up three slots? Just for a little context, I believe this came from the uh, RTX 2070 Ultra First Look video that we did. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I could assume it was a 20 series because of the whole three slot thing. Right. Um, as far as uh, will an EK water block fit the card, uh, generally yes if it's a reference based mm -hmm. PCB. Uh, if it's a non-reference like an FTW3 or something like that, uh, in general uh, it's going to vary from model to model if the, the company makes a block for uh, the, specific, the custom PCBs. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. FTWs tend to be our most popular card and a lot of other companies will make blocks for those, but uh, I don't know right now if there's any available for the FTW3. But the card we were showing right. was a reference-based PCB, right. so yes, um, you can just get a reference block for that and EK does make that. Right. Um, and then the second part of the question, uh, can you buy a two-slot bracket. Yes, we do have mm -hmm. the two-slot brackets available on our website. So if you go to the uh, accessories section under the products page, um, you'll see the two-slot brackets. Okay. Yeah, just be aware, um, if you're installing the two-slot bracket on one of our 2.75 slot um, cards, um, there's a little bit more disassembly required. Mm -hmm. Specifically, you actually have to get the base plate off of the card um, because there's an, an additional metal bracket on the three-slot bracket. It's kind of a support bracket. That has to be removed so that you can put the two-slot on there. There's a little confusion online about that, yeah. um, but uh, we now have information on our website to kind of help you out under our FAQ section. Yeah, I was actually intending on making a video on that later okay, if you'd sure. like so uh, right. okay so the next question is from Gherkin okay and he says uh, he or she says will there be a replacement uh, will, will there be replacement fans set out for the RTX owners that suffer from fans clicking uh, it seems to be a rather common issue on the early RTX cards. Okay, uh, we have seen a few reports of that. You know, we apologize if you're somebody where your fans are clicking. Um, definitely not a widespread issue, um, but like anything, when a new product comes out, there's little niggles and things that we have to work out on them. Um, on that card, if you're if you have a card and the fan is clicking, uh, please reach out to our support. Uh, we can get that replaced for you. And basically, it just comes down to a little tapping of the wire. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously, that can be very annoying. Um, we don't don't usually recommend that um, you try to change it on your own card because it's better to have us do it. Um, we warranty any work that we do on a card. Um, so, you know, if your fans are uh, ticking, reach out to us and uh, we'll get that fixed. Yeah, for me, um, I've taken like just my finger yeah. and pushed the wire back mm -hmm. and everything was fine. Um, you you got to be real careful if you do that though so you don't snap a fan blade because if you're pulling your finger out and you catch the blade, you could, you know, sure. Sure. do some actual physical damage to it. Um, and, and then I can't let this 
fly by, you said uh, with new cards there's sometimes little niggles. Mm -hmm. I've never heard that word. Niggles, yeah. Oh, it, it actually might be from all the English YouTubers that I watch. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> sounds like it. <laughs> Okay, Gone this next question <laughs> is from Kevin. Uh, Kevin asks, uh, hey EVGA, I just entered the step-up program to trade my 1080 Ti FTW3 ICX for a 2080 Ti XC Black Edition. I know that the Black Edition is a lower end card than the FTW3, but obviously the 2080 Ti is a higher end, is an overall higher end than the 2080 Ti. I was wondering what sort of performance difference I can expect between the two cards. Uh, the performance difference generally between like an FTW3 and a base model card um, isn't usually like mm -hmm. hugely significant sure. like jumping from one generation to the next. So uh, you will still see a very significant right. boost in performance. You can look up all the performance numbers online and although they're going to be slightly different models sometimes that you're going to be looking at as far as the numbers that are run, uh, you're going to be pretty close to within uh, margin of what you see from any 2080 Ti mm -hmm. uh, versus a 1080 Ti. Mm -hmm. um, the FTW3s generally are really good overclocking right. cards, so if you're going to try and push a card right. to its absolute limit, um, that's where the FTW3 mm -hmm. really comes in handy and really shines. Um, you do have a bit of a base overclock and mm -hmm. boost overclock just, just applied to the card at factory, but that's not going to be where the real power of an FTW3 comes out. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an overclocking. And a lot of times you can achieve some pretty epic overclocking on the base models as well, mm -hmm. so it really just depends. Um, but hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, uh, in general, we're seeing like 30, 35, some cases 40% performance right. improvement from uh, 1080 Ti to a 2080 Ti. Mm -hmm. So you should see a pretty big improvement. Yeah. Um, and if you plan on overclocking that 2080 Ti, you may see even more. And of course, as more of the RTX features, the ray tracing comes on, you could see a huge right. you know, quantum leap in performance right. because potentially that stuff may not even work on 10 series, but we're not sure at this point. Yeah, stuff like DLSS and yeah ray tracing right. big big difference right. um, if you're talking just raw performance numbers still a significant difference right. mm -hmm. so um, it, it will vary between games and mm -hmm. things like that uh, is this yeah. one okay this one's for you mm -hmm. um, Elva Wizzy okay. uh, is it <laughs> possible to down clock the GPU frequency from 2000 ish to below 1500 40% GPU usage and above causes insane coil whine with high frequency. Mm -hmm. uh, thinking about having a baby to drown out the coil whine whilst playing low intensity games. Okay. Um, I'll have to move to a construction site to play AAA games with my card and not hear coil whine. Okay. Uh, That's good. And do you want me to continue or should we'll, I? We'll address this first okay. part. Um, <laughs> If it's that bad, then please reach out to us. We we yeah. can do RMAs for coil wine. Um, there's a lot of things, the factors that can affect whether or not the card has coil wine in the power supply and just the configuration of the system in general. You do mention high frequencies, so if you're running at, say, 200 FPS or higher, then yes, you probably will hear it more so. Um, but if it is that loud, um, then we can certainly help you out without needing to downclock it so much. Um, precision or have a baby. Or have a baby or, or move, move to a construction, construction site. site. Um, <laughs> Precision XOC, I believe, will only let you downclock about 200 megahertz. Um, so if you actually wanted to keep a card at a lower frequency, um, you would need something like NVIDIA Inspector, uh, and you would actually need to lower the P-state of the card. And you need to hold it at a lower P-state. I believe there's a P-state on that card around 1240 megahertz um, that you could actually lock the card at. But again, you shouldn't need to do that. So it's right. not really something that uh, we need to recommend that you run out and do. Uh, better to reach out to our support, and then we can go from there. Um, yeah. There's a bit more to the question, so I'll if, let Joseph... If we're, if we're talking also 2000 sure. frequency, we can assume it's a, a 10 series or 20 right. series card. Um, so you're probably still under warranty. So definitely yeah. Yeah. take Ray's advice on that. Um, I will be having a baby soon, so I'll let you know which is worse, coil <laughs> wine or baby wine. But um, I, yeah. I, I think I can guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so to continue on your questions too, it says also, does the X299 Dark have the same ATX standoff holes as a normal ATX board? Yeah, it's all the same layout. Yes, it is a bit of a wider board because it's yeah. a, basically an EATX in width, um, but it's an ATX as far as the actual um, like height to the PCI to the top of the uh, CPU um, connectors. Yeah. So that's that ATX. This is um, EATX, but the holes still line up with ATX. Yeah, generally in my experience with 
the X299 Dark or EATX boards in general is um, if you do have like cable routing sure. holes and stuff in your case, um, sometimes that'll cover those up a bit. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the but it can fit. It can fit in, will be in, the in same. an ATX. We've yeah. seen it fit in ATX cases. I've used it. In, in, I've used it in an ATX setup a, co a couple different ones before, and I can tell you that it, it does still work for some of them. I mean, some right. obviously won't, right. but um, yeah, the screw points are the same. And then uh, one more follow up to that. He says, and any news X two ninety or any new X two ninety nine boards coming with Intel's X series refresh coming soon? Trademark question mark. We we don't know yet, so we don't have any information from Intel. Um, and right now, our X two ninety nine lineup as it is is pretty good. We just refreshed it with the Micro two, um, so there's no information on any revisions to those boards. Um, but uh, I think they're pretty good as is. And if there is any refresh to uh, on Intel's side, um, we would expect that our boards would support them, unless there was a whole socket change. Um, but again, that's not information that we really have yet. So um, stay tuned. Uh, next question here for Joseph is from Joseph uh, 5117. Simple question Does the power link affect the performance of your GPU? Thanks. Great name and great question. Uh, as far as the power link affecting performance of a GPU, no, it does not. No. Um, the, it's just a pass through for the power. There is a capacitor in there, um, so it's going to basically help to try and stabilize any voltage ripples or mm -hmm. you know things that are going on as it's being passed um, but that won't affect performance at all I mean you're talking if there was any kind of effect in performance it would be so negligible that, that there would be no way to tell right. uh, unless you had like super advanced testing equipment sure. or something like that uh, but yeah basically the answer is no right if your power link were to affect performance and it's probably because your power link for whatever reason is broken mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's something wrong with right. it which I don't think I've ever even seen because it's a very simple device now and I mean you do the whole RMAs and warranty yeah. and stuff I did it for a long time uh, never saw any I issues don't think I ever saw a broken power link yeah um, okay so the next one is dub mm -hmm. and he says is the guy on the left Kingpin's brother. That would be no. I am not related to Vince Lucido in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I don't have an Italian last name, uh, but Joseph does. So do, maybe, yeah. maybe they're related. Uh, probably, yeah. It's Lo Yacono and Lucido. I mean, there's probably some relation there. Who knows? Uh, but no, I'm, I'm not related to Kingpin. I've never actually met Vince, so maybe one day we'll fix that. Um, but for the time being, we are unrelated um, people working in a similar situation. Mm. All right. Yeah, and uh, we both like overclocking. Yeah, so that's fun. All right. This All right, is last the last one. question. Uh, this is from Don D. This is actually a continuation of what we were talking about on the last episode. He kind of clarified a little bit more. Um, sorry, should have clarified. Uh, I like the RGB sections of the X299 FTWK EATX board. Um, how? how it looks like magma or cracked ground. We like that too. Yeah. Um, it will not fit in the thermal take uh, view 71 without covering the grommets in the 24 pin cable. Uh, that is why I wanted it in an ATX form factor. Uh, it doesn't have to be one on the X299 platform, could be Z390 board or less enthusiast level board. The RGB sections are the theme that I'm going for in my next build. Uh, I plan on making custom acrylic panels for such case for such a case to suit the theme. Okay, um, so that basically uh, sort of addresses what we t just talked about. Mm -hmm. Is EATX will sometimes cover up the grommets mm -hmm. and yep. and like cable routing and things like that. So I understand that issue. Um, I haven't tried setting it up specifically in the View Seventy One, um, but I'd like to get my hands on that case. I know Kevin has one. Um, as far as uh, Let's see. He wanted to. I, I don't really see the question here, and I, I can't recall exactly what the I original think it, question it was. I um, think uh, to, to follow up on the previous one, it was about will we have any more boards that carry on that aesthetic, that kind of cracked magma LED right, right. on the future boards. Yeah, that is uh, sort of following our design um, direction right now. Mm -hmm. If you've noticed, you know, the graphics cards and the motherboards are kind of having a similar look. Uh, as far as that's concerned, it's like a spider web or yeah. cracked web ground, you could say that, yeah. Lit web, yeah. Um, so I wouldn't be too surprised to see that. Um, 
being incorporated into future boards. We typically don't do too much with like RGB right. and lighting because we tend to just stick with, um, you know, high quality, high performance stuff uh, and less th less frills mm -hmm. on our products. Um, although the demand for RGB stuff, we have been sort of moving in that direction a little bit. I've actually been pushing the team to add some more RGB sort of functionality to our future motherboards as well. Um, not necessarily built in, but I mean, look at our highest end boards are the darks. Sure. They don't even have any yeah. RGB headers or anything because we are emphasizing the dark as well, being they, just I think they have performer. headers, but they don't no. have any RGB on the board. Well, the X299 dark does not. Oh, really? I don't know if the 79 ever did. Okay. It seems a little early for us to have it. Yeah, we have no RGB headers at all on the X299 Dark, um, which is something I discovered because I was trying to okay. hook up stuff to it. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully we'll see more of that. And, you know, I'm always pushing for more RGB, more RGB, everything RGB, because um, you can always turn it off. Sure. You know, true. or you can set it to a single color. Just a color. feature. You don't have to use it. Right. I'd like to see more and more features and the ability to control those features sure. uh, adequately so that if you don't want that effect, you can always turn that off. But I think it's a great thing to see that we're kind of breaking out into that more and more. Even with our graphics cards, we've got the transparent shroud that kind of make the LEDs pop sure. a little bit. Well, I'm sure we'll see more of that in the future, sure. too. Um, so yeah, and yeah. it's worth noting on that too. You mentioned um, the case you're using and whatnot. Um, we do uh, mod rigs and we do sponsorships for um, special builds. So you may even be able to modify that case in such a way that it can fit the board um, that you want mm -hmm. and uh, have new cutouts for the grommets and things like that. We always love to see uh, you know inventive solutions for things like that. So you know yeah, feel free to try that as well. Yeah, our mod rig stuff too. These guys post. We we have them post. You know progress pictures and updates and right. stuff in our forums yep. check out the mod rigs and gear up stuff in our forums because these guys go through the process of how they do these mods and things like that and yep. it's really really cool yep. to see Very yep. cool. all right so thank you guys for watching this episode of ask evj great questions as always please make sure to leave any future questions in the comment section below and we will sure to address those in a future episode of ask evga you have a good day thank you so much